Welcome, everybody, to the Weekly Grind Podcast. I am your host, Keith Fabry, with my co-host tonight, Tommy Styles and Dr. Todd Lee. Guys, how you doing? What's up, Keith? All right. Doing well, doing well. Yeah, all right. So uh, episode number 27 tonight, guys. We have uh, on with us, and I'll introduce him now, IFBB Pro Bodybuilder, Charles the Tank Dixon. Charles, welcome to the Weekly Grind Podcast. Man, thanks for having me on, man. How you guys doing tonight? We are we are good. Good, Charles. First off, congratulations on uh, congratulations on your indie pro win, Charles. Man, appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, Charles, you uh, we got you on here. I, I, I contacted you here uh, not that long ago for uh, to see if you come on, and you were more than willing to come on. So we're glad we can have you on tonight. Uh, why don't you give everybody a little bit uh, background on you if they don't know who you are, which I'm sure most people do, and uh, give us some of your contest <laughs> history and stuff. Oh, everybody, man, you got Charles Dixon, aka the Tank, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure everybody kind of know that 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 name just to kind of. St- Stuck on me now, man. So I had to give that credit to actually uh, train my trainer. His dad started calling me that. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, down here in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, which a lot of people don't uh, have a clue where Greenville, South Carolina is. It's one of those little, little cities that, that's steady growing fast. But uh, I'm dying for Greenville, South Carolina, being here. Uh, pretty much all of my life, uh, um, down here in the South. So, uh, other than that, man, 45, everybody, you know, think, uh, I'm an old man, but I'm 45, which is, uh, the new 35. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> you know, man, it's probably basically it, man, you know, just, that's pretty much history, man. Everybody can keep on moving for as bodybuilding, though, um, you know, I turned pro in 2007. Okay. Uh, so I've been fortunate enough to to accomplish to have like five pro wins and to compete in the Arnold six times. But this past Arnold, my sixth Arnold, and this will be my seventh Olympia. So. Wow. Okay. So, 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 yeah, you've been around a lot, so, oh, quite a while. Um, what show did you turn pro at? I forgot. I turned pro at the Nationals in okay. 2007 at, uh, in Dallas. And uh, somebody told me they don't even have the Nationals in Dallas no more. No, it's... But I heard. No, it's... Well, they, no, they don't. No, it's, it's down in... Was it in Miami this year again, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they moved like around. Miami for almost 10 years. It was in Atlanta for a while. Then it was in it was in Fort Lauderdale for a couple of years. And then back to Miami. So <laughs> they just keep moving it around. I, I think probably... Miami's probably one of the better spots. Uh, they used to have the Junior USA in, in Dallas as well, uh, and that's not there anymore now. That's in South Carolina. Right, right. right. Yeah, I'm surprised they, got it. they um, took it out of Dallas because Dallas was a pretty good I said that would be pretty a pretty good, good spot for it there. No, uh, uh, it's because Pam Betts lives in Miami, so it's easier for her to have it right in her backyard than for her to actually fly to Dallas to true. have it. That's true. When you, in the 2012, they have it in Atlanta, and I guess it was harder on the promoters, even though I like the venue in Atlanta more than the Miami. Miami's just not the right city to have the national championship. In. It's too much difficulty flying in and dealing with traffic and then the weather and the humidity, it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. The, uh, I know once upon a time they was rotating, right? A lot right. of dollars and uh Florida, right? It's it's moved around over the years quite often, but yeah, it, it's it's been kind of stuck in Miami, you know, the last last few years after what one year I think it was in, in Atlanta. But, okay. <clears throat> all right, Charles, let's let's get going on this. Um you this year competitively you did the you did the Arnold where you play second uh, and then you just recently here a couple weeks ago won the Indy Pro two twelve. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your prep this year and stuff. And um, was anything different this year than in years past? Or you guys you and Trey just basically follow the same plan and just uh, you know because you know doing it over and over again it's just you know it just worked out this time for you where you've had some some of your better finishes. Probably we basically we we did pretty much. Basically, the uh, same criteria, same protocol. Okay. Probably the best, probably the most significant thing that we uh, 
that we did was actually, well, I was instructed to take six weeks off, but it ended up, man, I ended up taking like 11 weeks off. Okay. I'm from weight training. And we did cardio and whatnot, but I took some time, uh, 10 weeks off of weight training, and it basically, man, probably was one of the best decisions, at least maybe the top two, top three decisions that um, I could have made in my career. Um, for the simple fact, I just like recharge, man. My body actually got enough time to rest because what people don't understand, man, in 2017, so you got to think, I actually started prep for the 2017 Arnold the fall of 2016, right. October of 2016. So you got to think, I had been dieting from like October of 2016 all the way to September of 2017 to Olympic. Right. So, so you basically are like full year. Year. <laughs> So that risk, man, I think, you know, with, with the, with the, with the, all of rigorous things could they go along with prep, man. Y'all know how prep would be kind of taxing yeah. on your body. Yep. So I think that I I look good throughout the season. You know, last year probably was the first season I, you know, in, in four years I didn't didn't get a win. And I think, you know, I look good throughout the shows, but I think, especially at Olympia, I think you kinda saw a little a little where your body was tired. Body. Yeah. So yeah, so um Taking that break, man, probably was the best thing I could have done. Even though I knew I knew I was gonna lose, lose a little muscle mass, I knew I was gonna lose a little muscle fullness and volume. Oh, um, and I knew my weight was gonna drop. Which, man, for me, that was that was that was weird. You know, to to accept the fact that I knew I was gonna get smaller. You know, as bodybuilders, we always want to keep that big and full look, yep. but actually that, that helped me because I actually, when we got into the prep, my body actually responded to the point where I actually kind of grew into the diet. Okay. So, um, and therefore, man, by me losing a little, a little muscle mass, it actually made my weight smaller. Right. So that was, that was very intended. So I knew that, um, one of the things that they was harping on was, you know, my air control, my waistline, you know, some said I got, the bigger I got, I started a little, a little blocky. Okay. So, yeah. uh, but coming down in weight uh, throughout that rest period, that actually helped my waistline come down. Now, I still did cardio. That's the sure. that's good thing about it. I still kept some cardio in daily throughout that whole process. So, uh, like I say, that shit basically, man, just all a little smaller aches and pains that I was having, all the little, little joints and ligaments that need to heal and just recharge my battery and just come back fresh, man. I think that was probably the biggest the biggest change that we made. And throughout the diet, you got to understand, people don't understand, I wasn't even going to do the Arnold. I had said I am going to take a year off on the Arnold. And um, a friend of mine on the committee told me I should put my name in the hat again. I was like, I'll think about it. So, um, threw my name in the hat. And so it was like, it wasn't, you know, thinking about going to prep. So this was like, I decided to do it like 12 weeks out. So we had to go straight until to the, uh, what I call the rabbit diet. So maybe we straight <laughs> a little cardio and made everything just starting to come together. And throughout the whole process, man, I never was, I always felt I wasn't a part at the end as much as I have been in the past and throughout the process, man, you know, I just felt like um, the rest has made my body react to the cardio, the training, and the diet a lot better. Right. So, in the end, it kind of worked out, man, but let's say, um, I say the training was a little different. We went to a lot more of uh, high volume um, band training, which we got away from for a little while. Okay. So, we went back to that and just kind of focused on, on some detail work doing doing the weight training session. So, um, the weight training uh, and the rest period that I had man, was probably the, 
the biggest changes that we made. Yeah, well, your your central nervous system becomes taxed to the point of you know basically it, it's done once it's once you you've taxed it you're you know you're, you're going to start having you know you're going to start having issues where everything just not going to not going to fall into place anymore you know you're just basically the point of no return at that point so the, the rest obviously did you some good because i thought this was like one of your better looks on, on what you said for you is pretty much a, a quicker diet than what you would normally do uh for the arnold i thought that was that was one of your better looks at the arnold in the last couple of years and then the indie pro you you blew that out of the water completely um just a few weeks ago yeah i kind of uh, i got you know, us as bodybuilders, y'all can't relate to this too. It was like, you know, when when the two twelve first came out, everybody was kind of small. Right. So then it was like, okay, Jose was the first one that stepped up the plate and got big. Then everybody else started getting big. So I was like, hell, I gotta get big too. <laughs> and so I got big. So I think I think what people don't even realize, people thought I weighed in at the same same thing like I normally do. I'm always I was always pushing weight, you know, the 210, 211, 212, sure. or weighing at 212. I had to go sit in the hot ass steam room for 20 minutes to come back and make weight. Well, people don't actually realize, they were like, man, you look, man, you look a little bigger than normal. I like, I wasn't, because I actually weighed in at the Arnold, I actually weighed in at 204. <laughs> and people like, oh, and at the end of the pro, I actually I weighed in at two oh seven, but I weighed two oh seven with my clothes on. Okay. So I probably about the same. About two, yeah. Two, two, two. So so I finally got I got over that that bodybuilder's ego of being big and come to find out, I mean, I look the same as far as um, muscle fullness and, and my size didn't move to wear a lighter weight, but my condition, you know, throughout the show, people I always been kind of up and down, you know. I always look good at each show the last four or five years. You know, I look good each and every show. Sometimes my condition was was a little better than others. Sometimes I might have been a little off, but I look good. But you know, my condition has always been. It's always been so I was just like, man, I just need to like, I need to bring my condition out just a little bit more. So the um, when at a, at a lighter weight. Definitely helped. I'm still the same time. I'm still, you know, probably if not the biggest two twelve, one of the one of the biggest two. You are the biggest two twelve. <laughs> so, so you know, what I man. I think you know, the formula now, man, is just gonna keep my weight down. Um, uh, especially in the off season, like you know, at the Olympia, man. Like I said, I dropped down like two oh eight. So now the uh, magic number is keeping like two twenty. Okay. You know, no more than two point five. And so it'd be a lot easier for me to diet so I can like focus on more detailed ways, things of that nature. And so um and it's kind of bring a little tighter package. So now I think we found the formula to make sure that I'm always gonna be not only contention, you know, for a top five, but contention to um win the show, the biggest shows. That's always been my goal. I I, I always wanted it to be consistent in making the top five and the Arnold. And the Olympian, I always said that I probably got I got a better chance of winning the Arnold than the Olympia. So, so now I just think we got the formula right now to kind of, you know, make make that happen now. So it's kind of like I always been like on on the on the tail end of the top tier two twelves, you know, going into the second second tier. So now, you know, I think I solidified myself as you know in the top tier top tier two twelve. Yeah. So, uh, so that was a goal, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy we, we finally accomplished that. So now I just kind of like, you know, just keep improving and, and like I've been doing. So it kind of seemed like, you know, the older everybody does, you know, it's starting to fade a little bit. So I just been blessed enough to uh, keep improving. And I think, you know, um, if I keep doing the little small thing, sort of like, you know, pushing the line for a little. You know, ice and heat. You know, muscles here and there. Um, what's the thing, man? Uh, the, uh, uh, you stay there. And it's cold. I just did it last week for the first time. As so I'm still going you're talking about the cryotherapy. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, this shit cold as hell. I, you know, I have, <laughs> I have never done it, and I've seen people do it, and I, and I just look at it and I say, "You're fucking nuts," because there's no, <laughs> there's absolutely no way I'm ever doing that. <laughs> I said the same shit, bro. I said the same thing. I'm like, man, this shit cold. I said, give me that shit. Just stand it up. Just stand it up, man. But it actually, you know, really does help. So I just think I'm that, I'm in that point in my career now is that, you know, mainly work, you know, make sure I stay healthy. Right. Well, oh, that's, and that's the name of the game. And, you know, trying to get big. I mean, I'm big enough. Right. So um, I want to kind of stay, you know, stay on my side now and just keep that on. Um, that raging for prediction, man, and just keep improving each and every show. How old were you when you started lifting weights? Six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my dad got me a weight set when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, you're looking at 39, 39 years of weightlifting. Yeah, it's about you know. At this point, hey, it's, man, it's all about man. health. Now it's all about it's all about keeping your body healthy. Man, and what man is so weird? I always wanted to lift weights. My dad and I played sports. You know, I told my dad, I said, I want to get, I want to get bigger, play football. And so he brought me a, a weight set. But the only time I could live and when he was home. So the stronger I got, I saw. I said, Michael Hell is he ain't even here. Until one time, man, I tried some weights that were a little too heavy, and I got uh, so I rolled it down. I was lucky enough to know how to roll it down through my stomach and right. through my leg. I took the weights off and put it back and put it back like it was. And to this day, I just not told my parents that story about about a year ago. So <laughs> I was put the weights right in there, and my dad, um, you know, found out back then. You know, the thing was. Was that you know you shouldn't let kids shouldn't lift weights until they right. in middle school, high school, and start their growth. Right. So man, I had lived life like, from like from like six to like seven years old. Then my dad told me I couldn't lift no more until I got to high school. And man, I was kind of disappointed. I was really disappointed about it. And um, but man, when I got to high school, I, mean, I still did some push ups and play around with some dumbbells every now and then. But but when I got to high school, could really lift. I mean, man, it kind of took off. So so I started training, man. But but if people no, I don't believe I started training, weight training about six years old. But I I got some proof. I got some pictures to prove how I was weight training. I was kind of stocky back then, too. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, let's see. I was going to ask you. Uh, what weight did you turn pro at? Were you a middleweight? Or were you a light heavyweight? Yeah, uh, yeah I, started, I started as a middleweight. Okay, that's then, what I thought. Um, I started as a middleweight, then I went light heavy because... One reason why I want to go light heavy at that particular time, I was like, I was looking at cats like um, Chris Dims, uh, right. uh, who else was back then in the middle, and like heavy. And I was like, man, them cats be, but they shredded. And me having that, that I want to be big ego, I said, if I, I said, if I do good in this sport and have a chance to go pro, I want to go as a light heavy because. I felt like the light heavies at that particular time had a better chance of having a decent pro career, right. even though right. you know, 202 and 212 wasn't even out. Right, exactly. That, so, so yeah, man, I busted my butt. I remember, like, the first time I did light heavy, it was really by accident because it was, um, matter of fact, it was at the, it was at the Nationals um, in 2005, I think. Um, but I started training, man, started getting big. And so the goal was to get down the middleweight. But that didn't happen because, like, two weeks out, I was still, like, 212, 215. Okay. And um, the coach I had back then, he was like, man, you got to light heavy. So when I got there, they, um, you know, they put me in the back of the line just told me to rest with the light heavy. And, man, I came in second the first time I ever did light heavy. And you thought I would have won. And um, so – I developed, you know, a love for light heavies, and that's why I turned pro. Okay. How hard, uh, the, uh, until this year, up until this year, how hard was it for you to make that 212 cutoff? Woo wee! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, have, I have some stories. It probably been, besides the, besides the past two shows, the, on this year show, 
if you if you date back the last if we see three years, three and a half, four years, because the first couple of years we had trade work work together, I was still was kinda light. So okay. then like I said earlier, I saw when Jose them started getting big, I started getting big. And so you talking about, you know, three about three years of, of competing, I mean trying to get big. I could probably honestly sit here and say it might have been two shows out of out of eight shows that I actually got on the scale the first time and made weight. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> like, man, it, it got to the point that we would we would actually have to call in advance to find out if if the hotel had a sauna or a steam room or if a gym nearby had a sauna or a steam room. Just so you, could, or, just so you had that option, right? Yeah, and then that they worked, and we actually had to like pull the water on like Wednesday wow. instead of Thursday. I mean, it was like man, I caught so much hell sometimes, man, making weight. It was like, oh, uh, even that last year, Arnold, I had to, I had to go put on uh, some trash bags on, had to put a trash bag on, put a hoodie on. Yep, I had to go to the pool area. I had to do jumper jacks and run in place. To make weight, sounds like. So, it sounds like my, <laughs> that sounds like so, me, went, me wrestling when I back when I wrestled. <laughs> we had to do that. I would go practice with with trash bags yeah. on and stuff, and then and then jump on the scale and just hope that it uh, hope that it made weight. You were like, man, please, 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 let's say two eleven, please, yeah. two eleven, oh yeah, like twelve point five. You were like, man, you gonna man, you gonna let me slide for five ounces, and they win. No. I mean, no. they, they would. I'm like, come on, man. So I can honestly say, man, I, I had many, many, many episodes and issues making on uh, 212. So like I say, once I got that ego, got rid of the, the get big or stay big ego, and I finally, you know, I had so many, like, people like Bob Stickerello, you know, Chris Cito, some other judges and bodybuilding girls that I always say they're like, Tell you, man, if you if you suck it down about two or five, you you still gonna be the biggest two twenty. If Easily. you suck it down two yeah. or five, yeah. man, you 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 a piece of my ass. So so I finally got out there, look, get big, stay big, ego, and uh, suck it down. So mm -hmm. now, man, I mean, I really feel um, I really feel like you know that that's the golden ticket as long as I sell the two or five yeah. around that area. So. So um so yeah man I don't, I don't, I don't want to go through that I gotta make weight kill myself make weight thank you so much. well it's happen happening is your body ends up just getting tired just just from that alone I mean it can affect it affect the way you look the next day on stage by you know it also you know it also affects you you know when you carb load because you kind of like yeah kind of touch your body out a little bit your body kind of you know like super flat and super dehydrated right you don't have enough so, water. Yeah, so even though, you know, even though, like I said, I think that contributed to a lot of the shows that I look good, my conditioning was was good, you know, better than, better than others. But it could have been better. Yeah, after looking it back on it now, you know, and comparing notes, comparing pictures, et cetera, you know, I just kind of, I really believe that on um, all the times that I had, you know, do those extreme things to make weight, I think that had a lot to do with mainly, you know, me being dry and conditioned uh, like I need to be. Right. And then I also think it might have affected, you know, me uh, being full also. So, sure. so yeah, man, being, being lighter and, and being at the same time does exist. So I'm going to keep on doing that. Definitely. Yeah, well, it was, it was, it was a couple of your better looks that I've seen since you've gotten, uh, to the top of that 212 class. And we actually, I had uh, Derek Lunsford on uh, a couple months ago and he said, and this, this was what he said was, and he said this on air and then off air, he said the same thing was that he's around 205, 206 is his best look on stage. But he says, most of those guys are a lot lighter than you think. They're down around 200 pounds. He said, there's only a couple that are pushing that, pushing that 212 threshold. He said, you were one of them <laughs> from the Olympia last year. Yeah, you know, you know, I was one of them probably for probably, you know, from, from my knowledge and for and 
a the camaraderie that the two twelve like we do have. I just from my understanding, especially at the honor and Olympia, like other shows I could tell you right what what they wait with. But at the honor and Olympia, I probably would sit here and say probably the last probably the last two, two to three years, uh, Flex, Jose, me, and um uh, Eduardo and now now Amon probably one of the few dudes that were actually legit two twelve, you know, two ten, two ten or better. Right. And um, mainly because those guys are kinda of a little taller than me, so you know, that contributes to them being, you know, a little closer right. to two twelve. Right. So I feel like Flex Flex has been on the fucking cusp for like four years now. He's like two eleven point five every year. <laughs> you know, it makes, and it, it amazed me, you know, the man plays talk a good bit. It amazed me, man, how he got down to a science that he come in pretty much either either face gonna be two ten something or gonna be two eleven something. Right. Face the only person that I know of that has never had to come back away. And he be at the top of the class. I was like, boy, you got down to a science, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he be two ten at every living. I've noticed that uh, Jose the last couple of years has been bigger and he's been closer to that 212 mark and stuff and it seemed to me personally I don't know about what your opinion on this is that his better looks were when he was down under 205 when he was 2 to 205 yeah yeah you know me and Jose kind of got you got similar physique yes so we yep. short short and, and short. wide and thick yeah you know and like I say, man, I think with our height, I think we could. I heard the comment one time. Somebody said that maybe, maybe I was too big. I was like, how the hell can you be too big in bodybuilding? Right. And <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, okay, maybe he's not saying like muscle big, but you know, when you right. talk about it, you know, it's starting to end up making a lot of sense because you know, with us being shorter and and if and of course, everything is just going to be big. And right. so if we don't take control of our waistline, even though our waistline matches our body, if our waistline bigger, it's just going to make us look like we're not in the best shape. So, right. And it, and it makes um, you stand out in a lineup to where, you know, you it's it's like apples and oranges at that point. And if you've got a bunch of oranges and you've got one apple sitting in there, you know, where he's a little bit wider and a little thicker, uh, it, it can either work to your advantage or to your disadvantage. And then it's just basically what that what that judge's opinion is that day. Please, Charles, 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 what did you uh, do? You remember what you weighed last year at the uh, 2006? Or wait, this was at the yeah last year at the Chicago Pro. Because I, I was I, at that show. I was two oh nine. Okay, and then no, I was no, at, no, 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 no. I take that back. I take that back. I take that back. No, actually, I was two. I weighed at two oh six. Okay, that's how I weighed two oh six. I remember that. I remember that because I weighed two oh six dollars. I felt like I was heavy. And um that that was one of the few trips that Trey didn't get to go to. And I called him, I was like, I was like, man, you know when we get close to the way, I said, man, I'm about to whoop their ass. He said, why? He said, man, I waited two oh six. And I ain't waited two oh six in almost three years. <laughs> I was, no way I'ma lose this show. I said, no way I'm gonna lose. I said, man, I don't even know what I even look like. Cause I couldn't even tell you what I look like from the back. But I said, man, if we if we look good at at, you know, 210, 211, and we always, you know, you know, always at 10, top 16, top 8. I was like, man, there's no way that I will not win this show. And of course, I did win, but I think that was one of one of my better looks. I think I was still a little, I think my waistline was bigger than it is now, but I think conditioning wise, I was, I was kind of close to where it was the last past two shows. So, right. So, yeah, I, I, thought, really, I thought the waistline was uh, it was a little bigger, but the difference because I was at the two twelve Arnold this year too, and your hams and glutes were like night and day tighter than last year. So, and you said you were lighter this year. Yeah, yeah, I was okay. way light. So you, could, you could tell. I, I mean, I thought you had the Arnold. I was there in person, like thirty feet away. So, <laughs> <laughs> but y'all did, man, and I still, <laughs> you know. You know, like, like I say, a lot of people thought I was, like, sour about it. I was disappointed, yeah. But what people understand, you know, I came from, I think my best finish at the Arnold was the first year, and I made the top five. 
And ever since then, I've been six or seven. So for me to come from seven to seven to second, and I guess a lineup that basically was almost Olympia lineup, minus Flex and uh, Ahmad, I mean, that was pretty big. And right. um, I mean, now don't get me wrong, I still would like a little explanation about the score sheet because I won both comparison rounds. Now, for my I saw, I saw that. Now, unless the rules are changed, if you win both comparison rounds, in any division, NPC, Pro, whoever, you pretty much, you want to tow. It's two, right. it's two, it's two to nothing. So, okay, I won both comparison rounds. Okay, but the Arnold, they count on the night routine. Yeah. Okay, so he got first, I got a second, so he scored a five, I scored a 10. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying, let's do the math. That's two to one, right? But some kind of way, I came about one point short. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'm still, I mean, I am still happy about my first day. Um, I think, like I say, I think that show actually put me put me in, in the top level 212. So, I mean, my ass off to Kamal, man. Everybody thought that because I did because I didn't mention his name in an Instagram post. I just couldn't remember. I, I didn't could pronounce his name. So that's why I did <laughs> So everybody was like, uh, to take on sour by his I said, no, man, I just didn't know his name. And so, you know, ass off to him, man. He, he, he looked great. I mean, do I think I won? Of course. I mean, I think that day, I just think I had better. I think I had the better body on that day, but it didn't work out that way. But in the end, you know, it, it still I still got Olympic qualification. Yep. Like I said, you know, a few minutes ago, I solidified solid myself as one of the top two twelve. So, man, I'm, I'm I'm very happy about it, and I'm very you know I'm very excited about coming to the Arnold next year and try to I try to actually win the title. Yeah. Well, you solidified yourself with that Arnold performance, and then you you definitely cemented yourself uh, by winning the Indy Pro just a few weeks later and making yourself actually look a little bit better uh, than what you did at the Arnold. So, I mean, that's you, you've had a good a good run so far. That's why I wanted to ask what your next your next step is. And you said it's just the Olympia. Uh, you're just basically going to take some more time off then and and start your prep for the Olympia in June. Is that what, you, what your plan is? Yeah, I'm on. Just take man. I'm taking a few weeks off. I'm gonna take about eight weeks off. I'm okay. still doing cardio. Pretty much the same protocol. Sure, sure. What we do now after the um, Olympia. So I'm just kind of rest and heal up a little bit. I mean, I, I mean, I'm healthy. I just want to kind of let my battery charge a little bit. And um, the thing about me, man, it's just like I want to. I mean, I love to compete. And what's crazy as sound is, I I, I want to. I, I want to throw my hat. My original plan was to do the Arnold and either um, Toronto or or Dallas and Chicago. So I was going to do two shows. And because um, I just love to compete, man. I, I, I love to go out there on stage, perform, compete, and try to improve. And like I said, I'm just trying, you know, my goal before I retire is to get, you know, 10 pro wins and one major title. <laughs> But I also, you know, understand that if I'm at the Olympia, you know, I do need to take, you know, the, the right the right steps to make sure I'm good. So definitely, you know, taking a break is going to definitely help, you know, as far as, you know, you know my body prepared to go through the prep in June. So, so yeah, man, the team, this will be the first year I have, honestly, well, actually, I normally do two, two or three shows, but I'm actually... I don't, I don't compete in two shows, but the difference now is that this is the first time I actually get to enjoy pretty much, you know, a good bit of the summer. So I'm always, like, in the summertime, I'm always getting ready for a show in the summertime. So, man, you yeah. know, that that's just exciting. So I get to spend a little time, you know, with my son. And so, you know, I have to worry about, oh, daddy, I go to the gym. Oh, I got to do cardio. <laughs> oh, I can't do the donut. Oh, I can't eat no cookies. Oh, I can't do this. So now I get to let my scalp down a little bit, man, and enjoy a little time with some friends and family. <laughs> and people don't get to see that. I'm going to take a little break. And I'm, and like I said, I'm pretty much in shape. Nah, I mean, my weight is still, I'm still around about the highest I've ever been since Andy in 216. Okay. And that was a, um, a good bit of food. But my weight, you know, 
pretty much between like 212, 215 at the moment. So right. I'm going to keep doing cardio to keep my body fat levels down and, uh, and stay in some shape. So when it's time to get back at it, man, my, my muscles will be actually be fresh and, um, and ready for the living. All right. All right. Well, we're going to take a commercial break here real quick, and then we're going to come back with Charles Tank Dixon. Have you ever wished there was a site devoted to providing true information about bodybuilding? One that shows you what the top bodybuilders are really doing? It's all here at MuscleMentor.net. Nutrition, training, supplements, super supplements, contest prep, final week prep, and everything in between. There's training logs, diet logs, scientific articles, and hours of video footage covering every detail involved with building muscle and losing body fat. Brought to you by prep gurus, Justin Harris and Brent Hall, all for only $9.99 a month. That's right, MuscleMentor.net. Let's get free. Champion bodybuilder and biochemist, the best in testosterone support and in intra and post workout nutrition. And we are back with IFBB Pro 212 competitor Charles the Tank Dixon. And we uh, first segment there, we talked about your Indie Pro win and your Arnold uh, second place finish and some of the prior years of uh trying to make weight for the 212 uh let's let's skip ahead now let's go on to you're going to get ready for the olympia this year um you said you already said in the first segment you were going to take about eight weeks or so off of all weight training just do cardio just to kind of keep your weight down and kind of recharge your batteries like you did uh last year um after the olympia and leading into the arnold um let's talk about some of your training and stuff because you have some interesting ways with trey hodge that you guys like to go about training uh, a lot of band work. Uh, I've tried some of the stuff. I, I, off air, though, we mentioned I mentioned the deadlifts that literally took me twenty five fucking minutes to uh, to set up, and then I got about three reps out of it and said, "Fuck this, I'm done," because <laughs> there's no way I could do any more than that. Uh, some of, some of the moves that you you guys you guys have done are are pretty um pretty different, but pretty pretty effective. Obviously, by looking at your physique. Uh, let's let's talk about what your training uh, going into the Olympia is going to be like, and if there's anything different. Oh, uh, definitely gonna be different. Definitely, um, our main focus is definitely to not necessarily. When I tell people I want to get bigger for it, so I don't necessarily mean like gain like muscle mass. So I want to gain like some muscle more muscle fullness. Sure. So, um, the, uh, the training that we start, that we're gonna start out with first, mainly, uh, like I said early, like high volume with a few um, um, medium to heavy working sets. Okay. So maybe, like, just say with, like, leg pressing. So just say we'll start out uh, with a warm-up set, and then we'll do uh, – we'll start working sets at 15 to 20 reps. So we'll do three sets of uh, 15 to 20 uh, with your feet about shoulder width apart. Um, and then – for the heavy sets, so last two sets, so we add a little weight and drop the reps down to uh, eight to twelve. Okay. So, so you basically get you know your high volume and and kind of a uh, uh, a muscle building movement reps in at the same time. Sure. So um, we're gonna do that on this, uh, pretty much with each muscle group, and um, definitely keep with training. We just we you gonna do hands ham and glutes. You gonna do at least three days a week, and you're going to do a bad three days a week in some kind of capacity. So the way he got my training is that we pretty much hit, um, especially for Olympia, he just sent it to me yesterday, which, I mean, I bitched about it, but at the same time, it was just very exciting to to see um, the new workout. So we're basically going to be doing like um, two or three body parts in in one workout session. So okay. like you say, um, just say like uh, on a back day, you know, the main focus would be, you know, back in the morning, um, back in the morning, back in the afternoon. Um, one session would be mainly pulls, and be like 80% pulls um, and 20% rows. And then the second workout would be the opposite, be like 80% rows, 20% pulls. Okay. And then 
he will throw in like a, a, a some biceps in. But when people see, you know, like they say, man, you work two two muscle groups at the same time. It just that like the bicep exercises basically is like a um, touch up or maintenance exercises. Right. So it's just, it's just to get you know just to keep them honest during the week. It's you know the, the typical you know training once a week scenario, which we all know that. You know, the training back then compared to now, man, I just wish I'd have known some of the things I knew now back then. So, sure. you, know, you know, back in the day, it was like, you know, you couldn't train a body part. No, don't train a body part more than once. You got to. <laughs> so now we find it out that, you know, you can do, you know, body parts multiple times a week. So uh, we got a major, like, you know, a major mm-hmm. workout system major workout session for each muscle group, but then we got secondary workouts throughout the okay. week. So you might do like um back and bicep back and like the bicep workout, it just be like two exercises of a bicep workout. Um and you got me doing shoulders three times a week. So basically we doing all body parts um at least two or three times a week in a rotation. And then once they get closer to the um to the Olympia then we start throwing the bands in to try to take some of the tension off my joints. Sure. You know, and stuff like that. So we're going to make sure that we try to do as much injury prevention workouts as possible and still have some, you know, effective workouts that's going to that's gonna promote muscle fullness and, and keep me um, sharp at the show. Okay. So it's kind of like I say, it, 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 it's difficult, man. And, you know, me and Trey, we always put our heads together and um, try to come up with a good game plan. But, Honestly, I don't know where the hell he got this shit from. I ain't asked for it. <laughs> you know, so where, you know, it's always been a factor. One thing we definitely want to chew that we talked about after um, the Arnold and uh, Indy was that I wanted to uh, want to prove my lower back, which I have. So I have a lot, but I wanted to be where you know, I want to be, you know, got them that be popping. And so we're going to go to a lot of reverse grip rows, reverse grip pulls to help that situation out. So, sure. so man, that's pretty much how the training going to go. It, it's rough, but, you know, very effective. So it's going to be like, you know, high volume, you know, mini heavy um, um, sets. Okay. And then the closer you get to the show, they will switch to, um, to some band work, band work, high volume. It'd be mostly high volume band work. Yeah. But you get my, you know, it's under eight weeks out. So, okay. So, definitely, you know, I, I still I still get good workouts, good pumps. Um, and the workouts will be effective. It's just that it's a, it's, it's a different version. It's that, you know, going to follow the free, the free weights and, you know, the free movements. So now I have more control movements, you know, kind of prevent injuries and stuff like that. So, okay. so man, so we, we, yeah, y'all will definitely see when I start. I will, y'all know I post all my videos. And yep. y'all, y'all gonna be like, man, what the hell? <laughs> Todd, I know you had a couple questions for him. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. So, okay, let's take it back, if you don't mind, to October of 2016. You're about to start your prep for that extremely long season of 11 months of dieting. And then at the end of the 11 months, you took eight weeks off or 10 weeks off, came back to the weights. I'd like, in this process of taking out time off, instead of weighing in at 210, you're weighing in at 204 at the, um, I believe you said 204 at the Arnold of this 2018 What's the relative strength change over this time period of October 2016 to March of 2018? Uh, so my, you, you basically are losing a ton of weight and mass, but you said it was from your midsection. If the diameter of your shoulders and arms haven't lost any size, you shouldn't be just as strong, I would think. Actually, that's a good question because actually I am. Actually, to be honest, I feel in certain in certain exercises, I'm a little stronger. Okay. And um, uh, so when it kind of weird you ask me, that's, that's, that's a really good question because, I mean, to uh, give you a little example, I got, I got a little, um, I got a little uh, ego crazy one time and it's been recently. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and after I took my break, it was, it, it was a prep for the Olympics. 
And uh, I mean, from the arm. And uh, uh-huh. man, for some reason, for some reason, I have no idea why I got this. I, I developed this new love for deadlift. And so, mm-hmm. you know, we 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 added deadlift to to the training, but it it, it was the, the band deadlift. So <laughs> the stronger I got with the band deadlift, so I was like, man, I wanna I wanna how much weight can I pull on the floor? Mm-hmm. So got curious one day. I put three plates on. I did it ten times. I put four plates on. Got it eight. I was like, "What?" I said, "Man, I'm gonna try." They were like, "Man, don't do it. Please don't do it. They please don't try." I said, "Man, I can do five. I can do five plates." They were like, Man, "Please don't try." And my mom was in it. You know, she was like, "Boy, you know you got a so cold. You need to be doing all that crazy stuff." So I was like, "All right, all right, all right." But anyway, man, I ended up trying it, and I ended up getting. <laughs> Five reps. I could have done it a lot more. But more of the story is, man, I felt stronger because the year before when I was at, at um, you know, 210, two mark, 212 mark, I couldn't even get no four plates for five reps. For some reason, <laughs> but man, I, I feel stronger. I feel a lot stronger. Even like um, with incline ball barrel presses, that's always one of my weakest exercises. Mm-hmm. And probably the highest I could go with maybe, maybe 200 pounds. And um, got curious one day, so now I'm, I can do, you know, incline barbell presses about 225 to 230. And that's an all-time great for me. So, but yeah, for some reason, man, I feel I feel a lot stronger in a lot of exercises. So I don't know if it, you know, the strength coming from a lighter weight, but I say I'm still the same size and, and strength still the same, so... I say, man. I guess I just kind of, I guess I got hit with the um, God bless me with the with the genetics thing. I guess. Yeah, it's so, it's it's got to be. Well, I mean, it would have to be just from the rest itself. I mean, your central nervous, like you said, the central nervous system had a chance to recuperate and stuff. But I mean, your body was just probably just so worn down from dieting so much that that you were losing strength because, or or you just weren't progressing strength wise on the strength curve because of the fact that you were dieting for so long. I think I think they had a lot to do with it too. Yeah. I think I think with it, you know, my body being taxed out throughout those months. Cause I mean, I remember time, man, I could like I could do thigh laterals. I can do, you know, which it really don't matter what the weight is, you're gonna get the kind of same effect, but it used to like for me to come in there and, and start out with, with thirty five pounds, forty pounds, side lateral with nothing. And man, they got to be a struggle. Sure. And um, so I would have to agree with you about the central nervous system being worn down, and it kind of affects your strength. Mm-hmm. And then say you you your body kind of attacks out anyway, and kind of worn down. So so uh, yeah, definitely, man. We definitely gonna keep um, a good rest period in our protocol from now on. Do you have more time? So how much does your measurements? Compared to, so we know your waist is smaller and your look is more tapered. But do you feel your arms are the same size? Usually, the arms are one of the things that goes first. You know, do you, to lose My arms actually got bigger. I mean, like that's, that's why you're stronger. That's why you're stronger. That is, you build yeah. white fibers. You just lost mm-hmm. waist. Yeah, man. Actually, my arms, man. My biceps ain't never been this big, and my biceps probably. If you had to dissect my whole my physique, and then if you want to name a flaw, which there are very few that I think I have, biceps would probably one of them. That's probably the only flaw. But you had to look real, real close. And man, I would say, man, I need to bring up my bicep. And, you know, just like you said, after that train, and when I got better training, I noticed my biceps came up. I was like, well, hey, this a bitch. So, um, it definitely, it definitely was a good thing, man. Definitely. And so, you know, like I said, you know, just listening to what you, what you said, I, I definitely think, you know, once you tap that central nervous system out, man, it's kind of like, man, you just out of way. I mean, your vision jacked up. Yeah, you just, you know, yeah. eyesight, you can't see, man, you just kind of jacked up for a little while. So, so I definitely think, you know, strength wise, man, I think I'm, I'm actually a lot stronger. So I think that entitles me to actually keep my side, you know, at a lighter weight. 
So, you know, I'm still lifting pretty good, you know, beating heavyweight, you know, managing to control uh, <coughs> reps. So, therefore, you know, I, if I can, you know, my strength up, so, you know, more you, more you lift kind of heavy, you know, build muscle. So. Right. But, so, yeah, I would, I would definitely have to say, yeah, my strength is, is a lot better than it was back then. Mm-hmm. How uh, how low do you take the calories normally? How low or in the past? I mean, not this this I'm sure this prep was a little bit different just because like you guys you you went a little quicker with everything because of the rest period that you had before that. But in the past, trying to make weight and stuff, how low would you actually take your calories the last like say four weeks? Man, about like. Seventeen hundred calories, <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's why you were all you were getting so wore down from doing that all the time. Yeah, wow. like yeah. Seriously, it, uh, it seriously never fails though. Like everyone we have on this show diets like right down to that range, and mm-hmm. it's crazy yeah. that that guys in the MPC think they need fucking twenty five hundred to three thousand calories all the way to their final week. Good, man. They see so. Like hell, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm just, and that's why I asked that because, like, I mean, right now I'm I'm about seven and a half weeks out, and I just and my next week, my mine, mine are coming down to nineteen hundred. So I'm, you know, I that's why I was kind of asking where where you come down to and stuff. And you're 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 bigger than I am and stuff. Our, our weight's about the same, but you're just a bigger bodybuilder. I mean, you have more muscle mass on your body than than I do at the at the same weight, but. To, to hear you say that, that's just more validation because John Meadows told us the same thing. He he got he gets he's underneath two thousand calories. I mean, he bring he he would bring. What did he say with Fawad Abiyad? He was like 260, 270 pounds. He took him down to like twenty two hundred calories. Yeah, so you know twenty twenty three twenty three hundred wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just so funny. Is I never go below twenty two hundred. Even the week before the show. Yeah, well, you have this fucking metabolism yeah, that just yeah. races, Todd, too. Yeah. Todd's metabolism. Todd has the metabolism of two people. I, was, I literally <laughs> am eating 3,000 calories right now. Eight weeks out. I'm still losing weight. And I put up 265 inclines for a week. And I weigh 180. I'll give it to Hey man, we can't eat, man. We can't eat. I'll give you, I, I'll give you, I'll give you a sample. Oh, my diet, say five, from six weeks under, especially four weeks on. My first two meals consist of a quarter cup of gluten-free oats. That's it. Wait, you're, that's the whole meal? <laughs> <laughs> like, not even bothered. Yeah. That was like crickets waiting for more. <laughs> it's the only carbon intake that I have. Okay, and then and then it's pretty much what probably protein and vegetable the rest of the day. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. There you go. Diet. That's like it, diet. No, it, it, I, rotate, it, it rotate between ground turkey, uh, green beans, uh, beer, cod, or salmon. And asparagus, chicken. And I mean, for some reason, I'm really sound weird. And, and this past two shows, I probably have eaten chicken. It's a true story. I probably ate chicken maybe, uh, especially, for, especially for the last four weeks of the autumn, I probably ate chicken maybe four times. Yeah. And for, and for Indy, I ate chicken like once. And if I ate it, if I ate it, I put it in a salad. I put it like with some romaine, and spinach lettuce. Sure. And some almonds, and that's it. But other than that, man, I, I ate white ground turkey and fished it out. The whole side of the time. And it was like, this shit so. But honestly, I started to develop a little love for it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> when you get, you, you think you would fucking hate it, but no, you you end up loving it and becomes it becomes comfortable because it's it's normal for you. You know, you know, it's, and y'all can attest to this too at nighttime. You know, you get, I don't know where it's about nighttime. And you know, your ass ain't hungry. You really ain't hungry. You're like, okay, you been all day dying and starving yourself all day, so then your ass want to get hungry at night. So right at nighttime, how one of the things that I do. To kind of like keep my mind off of eating, and which you know a lot of people know, 
a little story about me. If I can't sleep or I get hungry, I go to the gym and do cardio. Right. So I would actually like kind of wear myself out. And plus, mm-hmm. I'm getting some extra cardio in. So by the time I get back home, I might go to the car like 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night. Right. So by the time I get back, hell, I want to go to sleep. So I'm not thinking about food. Sure. And it's like, and we all know, man, you really, you really ain't hungry at night. You hungry, but you ain't just hungry. You just so used to going to eat. And the fact that you can't eat nothing, then you want it. And right. it's like, you know, I got my little tricks for it, like eating on cucumbers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, cucumbers is my specialty, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cucumbers, so cucumbers and pickles, and, sea salt. and yep, sea salt are just pickles. Yeah, oh, pickles, boy, the shit, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Every pregnant woman approves. Yeah, boy. Todd, Todd, Oops. for um, he met, he mentioned eating <laughs> eating at night because he's you know you're hungry at night and stuff. A lot of that Todd has to probably do with uh, estrogen release at night, doesn't it? I think it's the GLUT4 transporters are more up. Basically, the muscles are hungrier at night. That's why I do carb backloading for all the clients. Is that like that in the morning, you are like cortisol is at its highest. Right. But the muscles are also hungry. So if you have the carbs in the morning, it could go to fat and then get burnt off later in the day. But at night, if you haven't had carbs all day, the GLUT4 transporters in the muscles are really high because you burnt your glycogen all day, you're more likely to store all those carbs as at night. Glycogen. So your blood sugar is basically lower at night than it would be in the middle of the day. Okay. If I go to bed with an 80 blood sugar, I can wake up with 110 sometimes because I went hypo in the middle of the night. My liver went to gluconeogenesis. Cortisol was released. I broke down muscle while I was sleeping just to make it through the night. Right. So Shit. then... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, your your body is only going to take so much of the protein in that you that you actually eat and turn it into new muscle or for muscle um, muscle maintenance. The rest of it's going to get converted in the liver um, to glucose as fuel, and if it stores first, then it, then it'll it'll just take and basically convert whatever's in there, and you know, it's going to convert it in the morning, like like Todd said, when the blood sugar goes low in the middle of the night. So that's. Right. So that's why I actually eat all the way up until I go to bed, even carbs, because I'm waking up with better blood sugar in the morning if I don't try to do what everyone else does. Right. Because sometimes you just kind of accept, like, you ain't like everyone else. Right. You know, it's like me and Charles have the same height. We seem to have the same shoulder. Well, I mean, yours are much better than mine, but I, we have the same problem with biceps, that people with our body type, called the alligator body type, are better at pushing than pulling. Like deadlifts are my worst lift. I can squat more than I can deadlift. You know what I mean? Uh, like, so it's weird, but we're built the same. We have a similar lifts. The biceps are a flaw. This is so, you know, and likewise with other fast metabolism people, they found this with diabetics. If they give them insulin, then in the middle of the night, they wake up with worse blood sugar because their blood sugar got so low, they had a reaction called the smagogi effect in the middle of the night, and their blood sugar is higher in the morning because of catabolism in the middle of the night. So if I'm waking up at like 4 a.m. pissing Guinness foam, and my my sheets smell like ammonia, it means that I went into a catabolic state in the middle of the night. So I actually have to keep my carbs good in the middle of the night. Now, even though I'm a jerk, and I don't let people have carbs before they lift because I think you burn more fat while you're lifting, at least in the beginning of it. And your muscles are more receptive to carbs intra-workout if you didn't have any earlier in the day. Personally, me, if I go into a workout without carbs and insulin, I start smelling like ammonia after my first heavy set. That you'll see in a lot of my pictures, I wear a knit cap. It's because the knit cap absorbs so much sweat. I can smell the cap in, in the workout to see when do I kick over to lose the muscle. And that's when I can hit my mid-workout carbohydrate drink or take in more battle me before that point. Right. So I've had to learn to get around the fast metabolism's flaw because for years I didn't gain any size at all. You know, I was pretty much the exact same weight on stage for six years because I was doing what I was supposed to do not rolling with the punches that your metabolism throws you. So, you know, like if I was Charles, I would be like that quarter cup of oats 
I probably have it after I lift rather than first, rather than first thing in the morning. But he's obviously shredded as fuck. So why would I think <laughs> right. what would work for me would work for him? You know? Char- <laughs> Charles, do you train? Do you train twice a day uh, typically? Yeah. Okay. So you're training in the morning, and then you're training again, probably what four or five hours later. Uh, if I train in the morning, sometimes it'd be about four or five hours later. Sometimes it'd be like uh, maybe like late evening. Most time we train in the morning is like eleven o'clock. Okay, and, and, then, and then, then normally we come to train maybe about five between five and seven. Okay. Yeah. That's- Man, so I, tr- I tried that hard? for like I tried that two a days for like. A, like a month once, and it just it doesn't work for my material. No, you wouldn't do it. Body, There's but. no way because you'd have to eat like ten thousand calories a day. <laughs> my hair started falling out when I did that. <laughs> Man, we, that was before I found DC. So yeah, yeah, twice, twice a day will work for you because you'll be um you'll be a welterweight. Yeah. No, I'm too tall to be a, I'm too tall to be a welterweight. I would love to be able to do it if I had the time to do it, and I think I could, I could do it and, and and be fine with it. But it, it's just I don't have the fucking time to do it. I mean, I got to be up, just find, yeah. finding time in the morning and stuff for for cardio right now, and then some training it. Like I'm gonna after we get done here, I'm 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 training after we get done. Wow. <laughs> and then I'll be up. Have, occasionally, 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 we do train. Me and my workout partner Corey, um, occasionally we will like on a weekend or something, man, we're just like, man, bump it. Even like 10, 11 o'clock at night, we're like, man, let's go train. Yeah. Now, I tell you what I have noticed by doing that. Now, and what, now, if I do train, now, if I do catch a dose to do that, I kind of like, um, he, of course, he's playing. So, just my eating accordingly. Now, what I will do, just, just say, basically, if we decided, okay, just say, this is Friday, which ain't going to happen, but just say Friday, we say, man, it's going to work out at 11 o'clock at night. So what I would do is between, I would make, like, I would eat around about 8. Yep. Yeah, I eat around about 8 o'clock. And so normally, you know, like I say, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I'm like you, I, I still eat up, up till I go to bed. So mm-hmm. what I would do is I eat at 8 o'clock. So I would pretend like a night workout is going to be a morning workout. And so what I would do is I do my post, uh, my post egg white shake before, which again, it ain't nothing but a cup of egg whites, uh, a cup of uh, almond milk, and a quarter of a cup of oats. That's all it is. And, and, and a scoop of protein powder. <laughs> so that's good. So the way, the way I kind of figured out was that, okay, I'm getting, I got a few carbs, I got a few uh, protein in my soup, which I know going to burn up pretty fast. Yep. So yeah. I was figuring that um, if I, you know, drink it, you know, maybe like, say we got 11, I drink around about 10. So by the time the process, now I know between, by halfway through the workout, I mean, I know that it pretty much gone. So therefore, I feel like, just like you said a few minutes ago, I just feel like by the time my body is on process and I'll chew it up, the protein shake and the carbs and the protein, I mean, the NY anyway shake, then you're going to tap into the fat cells while working out. Mm-hmm. What I have noticed, it seemed like, it seemed like, and I don't know what it is, it seemed like I would burn, it seemed like I would, especially like close to a show, I would feel, if I work out at nighttime like that, I would feel the exact same way after working out as I just did like an hour cardio on a stem master. So that's why I got the idea. I was like, well, maybe my body burning <clears throat> a little more body fat at nighttime. So I will do, I will do that occasionally. I will do it because I don't know if it's a mental thing. I don't know if it's really happening, but I got that same kind of feeling that I have after I do cardio. And of course, you know, cardio, you feel like, you know, you don't burn 2000 calories, but um, um, I actually feel a different there right after I drink uh, another egg white uh, egg white protein and a quarter cup of oats. There's something and, to um, that because I've been training typically right about right now, every night, uh, 10, 11 o'clock, and I'm usually home by midnight and in bed, and I'll eat. As soon as I get, I got my food ready, I'll just come home, eat real quick, and then go to bed. Um, 
there is something to that with burning more fat at night because I've actually leaned out more in the last couple weeks since I started training a little later than yeah. I had. Than I had. It, it's it for whatever reason. It's it's just I don't know if it's the time between meals is a little bit more spaced out. Like you said, there's a little more time between meals, and even if you take take in like a protein shake or something before you go to the gym. That's not that. That's not really anything substantial. It's going to get burnt up right away because your body is wanting food, so it's going to digest pretty quickly and get through you, and it's going to be burnt up halfway through your training. So I don't know if it's just that, or if it's just if it's just a change of, of time of day and stuff, and and because your workouts, if you're doing cardio in the morning, are a little closer to one another than normal. Right. Uh, because uh, like I'm getting done. I'm in bed at I'm in bed at twelve usually, and then I'm up at five doing cardio. Right. Actually, sleep. I mean, I know. Yeah. I do oh, notice that's, that's I, do. I sleep like a rock. I mean, I'm I'm out. It's five o'clock. I'm uh, in the morning. I wake up and it's like I do. Now I woke up. To, I woke up to piss a couple of times, but I don't even remember waking up to piss because I was I was like having a daze. <laughs> Yeah, I was at, you actually sleep a good, you know, five, six hours. Yeah, and it's like sleeping I do 10. Know, yeah, I know if I do cardio late or work out late, I feel that, that same feeling. So that's why people are like, man, why you do cardio late at night? I was like, man, I just feel like, I just feel like I'm getting, I'm getting some extra work in for number one. Right. And then number two, I just kind of feel like, you know, I mean, in that time frame, I just feel like my body, metabolic rate is a, is real high. Right. And, and first, I'm sleepy, too. So it's like, go work out, do cardio, drink protein, so go to sleep. Sleep like a rock. And then, <laughs> like you, I get like 6 o'clock, then I'm back up doing cardio again. So right. I just kind of feel like that I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm burning more fat cells. Yep. You know, in a, in a in an eight-hour eight period of time. Well, you're burning more you know, fat, person. and your food is more efficient going through your body because you're processing that food a lot quicker, and it's getting through your body and, and getting around, you know, moving around your body uh, much more efficiently than what it would be if you were, you know, jam-packing your food into into certain, you know, pigeonholing into a certain amount of time per day and then training, you know, maybe a little bit earlier. You have a little more fasted time in there maybe um, where there's not as much fasted time at between or around your training. So, you're efficiently moving that food around. It's getting where it needs to go, and, and you're metabolizing, I think, a lot better than what you normally would. Right. I have to agree with that. So, well, hell, to everybody that's listening, y'all better thank us for that free damn good advice y'all just got. Yeah, I would just have to test that. So, you know, that's why I'm always, man, I'm, I'm especially like getting laid in the prep. I'm always up at night doing cardio because, man, y'all know how it is, man. You get about five weeks out, you can't sleep. Fuck no. You know, it's always like, I look at it like this. If I can't sleep, I'm always be productive. So, I mean, I'm like, Bobby, I'm going to do cardio. Yeah, that was that was me last night. I I, I got uh, I got home, I ate, I laid down at 12 o'clock, and at 2 o'clock, I'm still staring at the fucking clock. <laughs> <laughs> Three o'clock, three o'clock rolled around. I woke up and I'm like, oh shit, I actually fell asleep. I had to go take a piss and I got laid back down. <laughs> the next thing you know, it's five o'clock and I'm just fucking exhausted. It's, I've been running on fumes all day today. I, yeah, you like me. I hate, I hate man. I, but, but, yeah, but normally, I normally I, I sleep really good, you know, that, that time period. I mean, I'm out and I'm just well rested. But for whatever reason, I actually, like, fuck it. I know the reason why yesterday. <laughs> why? Yeah. I'll, we'll talk about it later, but it's, uh, I was I I just you get to that point in in your prep where certain things give you like anxiety and give you um, um sleeplessness. <laughs> I was like I think that was I the start think, of it yesterday. Man, I never had issues with anxiety. Man, this is the first time this year I have. I just people talk about anxiety. Like man, ain't no damn anxiety, man. You fake. You. <laughs> We met a couple of times. I mean, this year, man, I'm like, damn, this shit really real. So, yeah. so yeah, man, it's already that, that ain't that ain't fun. No, <laughs> no. couldn't shut yeah, my brain off last night. Anxiety, like, why? Oh. What, what's different? What's the provoking factor? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. People. I mean, I think. I think, man, the closer it got to the show, the oh, especially. Man, I don't know if it was, it was a point, man, because 
after a while, I kind of, I'm like, man, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the line of, and man, I'm like, man, this line, this line of, it, it, it's tough, but it's doable. Right. And I think, yeah, I got, I think I just got so entwined with, with the old men and, and I start acting like a female, man. You know how females get close to get so they think they fat and shit, man. I got like You got the same way. Yep. Man, then it's like, man, you got a hundred things running through your brain, man. Then you got oh man, then don't let the personal shit kick get away, man. Baby mama drama and shit. You be like, fuck. Well man, <laughs> even one night, I was like, man, I couldn't stop. I was like, fuck, this shit real. So Man, I was like, I always thought anxiety was a joke. So it's like, okay, uh, we're gonna have to find something to cure this. So, um, but yeah, the anxiety, it, it ain't, it kind of find out, man, it, you know, it definitely throw your cortisol level up the roof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, man, I got to, I'm like, man, why I look soft today? And um, man, I look soft, man, my lungs had kind of disappeared for a couple of days. And I'm like, okay, yeah, we gotta, uh, we gotta find a little remedy for this. Yeah, it's cool. The cortisol build up, water retention, all that shit goes together. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, you got any appearances or anything coming up? Anything, Charles? Uh, guest posing, maybe, or anything coming up? Man, I don't have anything coming up. Uh, but uh, I will be. Uh, I got Count June. Um, up in Jacksonville, um, North Carolina. I always go up there and get posed for the um, Ravens. Okay. In June. Cool. Uh, oh. Then I got another guest pose in uh, and even, uh, up in Olympia. Because I kind of, you know, I like traveling. I don't mind traveling for when it's early in, in prep. But uh, when it gets like 10 weeks out, I hate traveling. Sure. It's so, a pain in the ass. I, didn't you, uh, didn't you guest pose like a week out from the Arnold this year? Yo, man. I did. <laughs> man, 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 talk go way back. Me and Sam, we call him Curly Top. Me and Taco go way back. I've been doing, I've been doing Top since like 2002. All right. And he called me like, he called me like, at the, not really the last minute, but he called me like, man, he called me like a month out from the, uh, from the long he was like, Shawty, I need a favor. I'm like, wait, he said, man, I need your guest phone. I was like, when? He said, the 24th. I'm like, talk to them on the week out, boo. <laughs> 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 I was like, man, I'm 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 like, man, i am like i like man I do it. So, yeah, that was one of the few times you ever catch me doing that. Man, he's he a good friend of mine, man. I'm pretty, he, he'll do it for me. So, I um, mean, when I saw the yeah. pictures, I was like, that's how I, I picked you to win the Arnold, right? When I saw those pictures, I was just like, I don't know why he did it a week out, but he looked like he did. <laughs> I was like, man, I like talk. I'm going to give you a homeboy discount, but you got to pay me, man. So, <laughs> Yeah, we can't. I mean, we took a little deal that we both couldn't say no to. So I was like, all right, man. The yeah, year that that won't happen again. I promise you that. <laughs> I don't care. You're going to pay me eight grand to come. I ain't come. I don't know. I might just pay eight grand. <laughs> you know, suck it up. But, um, but other than that, man, I got, I got some, um, uh, I got a tricky show. Okay. Uh, October. I got one in Missouri, um, in November. So, most of the stuff I got going on, man, going to be out the limit because, yeah, like I said, man, I definitely want to put all my efforts into uh, bringing the best package in for for the Olympia. So, I mean, now that somebody call me and give me a good offer that I can't say no to, so I'm just going to you know, lay low, man, and, and focus on Olympia. Sure. Well, this is definitely the year to do it. You've, uh, like you said, you solidified yourself as one of the top tier two twelves now. So, getting, getting yourself out of that that second and third call out, and, and maybe getting yourself into that first call out for the Olympia and, and moving your way up the ladder. This is probably the year to to start that. So, this is a smart yeah. time to do it. So. I kind of feel like this. I kind of feel like I think, 
And I know, I know everybody gonna come. I know everybody gonna be in their bed. I mean, I, oh, it's yeah. not my and it's gonna be a stacked lineup too. I mean, you're, you're gonna have the best guys. Hey, and, and I just think, I think that it's gonna be, it's gonna, everybody gonna be, everybody gonna be on, everybody gonna be in good shape. And I just think that it will come down to a few little amount of things that can separate. Yep. You know, places, you know, to play. Yeah, I just feel like I feel like if if I can see people slipping, I mean, I come in with my bed and a few things fall where they need to fall. Yeah, I definitely think I, I know I know I can get the top five, and sure. I think if, if if a few things happen, I definitely get the top three and, and, and raise them hell to try to win it. But I say, man, I gotta tell everybody, ain't nobody push flags. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody scared of flicks. I mean, he, you can't count. I don't count the uh, the Hottie Chopin dude. I don't even count that. Cause people think the dude. I said no, he did not look better than flicks. I said, oh, boy, he's blocky. I agree. I, I agree with that. His structures. He's got a lot of muscle, but it, it doesn't flow at all. Yeah. yeah. So I like that. Wasn't even on contest, I'm saying. So everybody talk. Oh, Chopin should have win, man. He be. I just feel it's like this, and I ain't saying that because we all cool, but if he playing on going against Flex, Jose, B, and David, he might come in for it if I was on. I mean, just because like, I just think we all got a better shape and a better look, a better structure than he do. And I'll get me wrong with dude big, but, I mean, he ain't no bigger than me. Right. So, right. You know, but ain't no, they really push Flex, man. Ain't nobody gave, ain't nobody made Flex sit back after prejudge and be like, damn. Am I going? <laughs> Right, right. Ain't nobody yeah, yeah. And I'm saying, man, I just think that this is a year that it, whether it be me, David, Jose, Amar, whoever, you know, I think that this would be the year that that it could happen. So, um, so yeah, I definitely want to focus on that and put all my efforts in. Sure. Into that. And so, so that's pretty much my game. You playing red? Yeah. That's pretty much it. Well, it sounds like uh, it sounds like you got everything everything covered, all your bases covered, and you and Trey have a pretty good plan. So, uh, we wish you luck, obviously. Um, you know, get through it healthy, obviously, and get get uh, get your prep going in June. You know, take your time off. You deserve it. Your your last two shows, you you definitely deserve to uh, take a little time off after that. So, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, some people like coming on here. I've I've reached out to a lot of people, and you were probably one of the quickest ones to say, "Absolutely, I'll be on." So I appreciate that. Um, and anytime you want to come on, man. Anytime you want to come on and talk, um, just no, 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 get, a, no, get a hold of me. It's guys like you, man. I mean, you know, you got you got a lot of guys right here that got a little podcast, and you know, someone someone invite me to their little pages. You know. <laughs> And, you know, you know I'm, I'm, and it's just my, you know, my, you know, I, we ain't never met, but just by talking to you and just looking at your podcast, I'm not gonna call no names because I know I probably get get some flat for it. <laughs> but I'm sure y'all know it's another podcast that start with geared up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that, that. So, um, and it just meant, and they always invite me on their page and, and, and things like that. And it just, man, some people, I just, the bodybuilding world has gotten so worn down, man, that people just don't, don't post and talk about it. But strictly bodybuilding. And, and man, my hat's off with you. You know, I check, check you out. And, man, you keep doing what you're doing because I, I like I like your style. I like that. You actually, you know, you don't go on your site. You don't, you know, talking about people. You don't go on your, you know, talking about, oh, this person ain't got a chance in hell to beat nobody. Right. Uh, which, that's what Geared Up said about 
So, <laughs> so uh, I guess well, you can tell I got a thing like Geared Up. Hey, geared Up is the reason why this podcast exists. Um, Adam McVay, <laughs> I'll say it. I don't really care. I don't, I can't stand him. I got no use for him. He's the reason why <laughs> this this podcast exists and why I started my own group. Um, I won an overall in 2016 in a show. I posted my pictures on there, and I literally got ripped from uh, here to tomorrow about my condition because apparently it wasn't Olympia ready, even though it was a fucking national qualifier. Um, you see what I'm talking about? My, my, mind you that they didn't realize that I was working two jobs, prepping clients, um, building a house, planning a wedding, and had a, a five-month-old son at the time. And that was, and that was, you know, basically my day was, I was trying to squeeze in two hours so I could train and do cardio. Um, and I still managed to win an overall. Um, but, but I had, I had to feel like I had to apologize for doing so. So I, I got myself out of the group. I started my own group the next day. And then we kind of talked about this podcast and it took us a while to get it off the ground, but we, we, we got it off the ground last fall and it's, it's just, it's just kept rolling since then. The, the amount of guests that I have and some of the level of guests that I've had, you included have just been, you know, I think better guests than what they have by far. Man, look, bro, you keep doing what you know what I'm saying. I mean, I like to associate myself with, you know, positive people, especially in the bodybuilding industry, man, because it's just, you got, you got so much negative stuff going on. You got, you got very few people who actually love the sport and support the sport yeah. like you guys do. So, yeah, when I saw that, man, I went to, I said, that's why I took me so long to reply back to you. Where did it take me long? I said, hold on, let me take him out. <laughs> and so, but you know, man, I appreciate you again, man, for having me on. Definitely. So, Anytime yeah. you want to come on, Charles, just let me know. We'll get you on here. Um, so that's for sure. That's I, been... will, man, I definitely will. I definitely will, man. I appreciate you guys. Again, man, thanks for the little information y'all gave me, man. <laughs> I got to say, you, 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 you know, you, uh, I'm a pro. I'm like, man, yeah, I'm a pro, but I ain't Jesus, so I don't know everything. So, sure. <laughs> you know, we to learn something for the people, man. So, I definitely appreciate it for you um, turn me on, too. And y'all keep doing good things, man. And I keep supporting your show and following your show, man. Awesome. All Thank right. You so much for coming on, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it, Charles. Bring that fucking next level conditioning to the Olympia, dude. You'll not flex out. I, you got <laughs> yes. all the mass. You got all the mass in the world, dude. Your quads were nuts in 2016 at the Chicago Pro. That was like that yes, actually sir. made me drop my mouth. Like when I see <laughs> how big your quads really are, like in person, dude. Yeah, I, Charles. <laughs> Charles, we. Uh, I met you back. God, you remember, You probably might not remember it. It was at the Arnold in 2015 at the meet and greet. Um, everybody was lined up to see Dana Lynn Bailey and I was in line <laughs> with my, <laughs> with my wife. I was in line with my wife going around that meet and greet and wait, waiting to get in line for Dana Lynn. And I just happened to walk around. And I was like, that's fucking Charles Dixon. And my wife just looks at me and she goes, well, go over there. I'm like, fuck, I might as well. I got like 25 minutes before we move. So I walked over and talked to Charles for about 10 minutes and he, he was gracious enough to talk to me and shit. Yeah. I remember, man, and what was so good about, man, I brought, it is a true story. I said, man, they need to put me near somebody every year. For one year, one year they put me in between Dexter and Iris at the Olympia. <laughs> and, and, and when I tell you, I, I mean, I was, I was fairly new, so I didn't have no t-shirts, so I didn't have a whole bunch of food. And when I told you, I brought like, I think I brought like 50 pictures. And man, I, you know, I was new, I was new, I was new. I ain't know. I ain't know you can charge where you want to charge. So I was done. I'm just charging five dollars. So we were just like they were. They were. They were getting line for days. So while they waiting in days in line, they'll see me. They were like, "Oh, they gonna charge." This why they started calling me tank. And then you know people there by my they they buy a picture blah blah. But when they put me in this, they land Bailey. Well, I sold all my people to three. <laughs> 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 And they were like, oh, shit. Well, Tank right now, so I can I can take a picture with Tank and get a t-shirt, and I still be alone and wait for Danny and Bailey. <laughs> man. So, the last thing, man, they put beside some bikini chick. I'm like, man, come on, dude. I need somebody with some clout. So, hopefully this year, man, they put beside Sun, Road, Big Rain, put, put by So, <laughs> 
but I'll just be there, man, and I'll be some talking to you. Awesome. Man. All right. Well, this has been the Weekly Grind Podcast, sponsored by Valhalla Labs at Valhalla-Labs.com. And we will be back next week with uh, Anabolic U Part 4. We're talking about high-dose gear and SEO with uh, IFBB Pro Nick Trigilli. So we'll have him back on again next week. Uh, so I, again, like to thank everybody for coming on tonight. Charles, thanks. Uh, and we will uh, see everybody again next week. This podcast will be up tomorrow night. I'll have it up by tomorrow night. Um, so you guys can all share it up and stuff. So until then, keep grinding. Man.